Hello and welcome to my Swift tutorial series for beginners. In this video, I want to talk to you about initializer methods for classes. These guys exist to make sure that when you create a new object of your class, that that object is ready to go. Plus, you can customize these initializer methods to set up your object in any way that you want when you create a new object from your class. All right, so let's get started and see what that all means. So what I've got here on the screen is the playground that we created back in the classes part two lesson when we we're talking about subclassing. Just to remind you, we have a person class and then we have an employee class, which is a subclass of that person class. And then we have a manager class, which is a subclass of the employee class. So now that I've jogged your memory about what we have here, why don't we create a new person object? Do you remember how to do that? First of all, you use the class name followed by two rounded parentheses, right? Let me show you. Let's do it here. Person, two rounded parentheses. And just like that, we've created a new person object. Well, what you might notice is that this kind of looks like a function call, right? Remember, to call a function, you write the function name followed by two rounded parentheses and then any input parameters in between those parentheses. In this case, Right here, person with these two rounded parentheses, you actually are calling a function of that class. Now, I know that might seem weird because if you scroll up to the top here, we don't have any functions declared in the person class, right? Well, there's actually a initializer function that is default to all classes that you don't have to declare. And let me show you what it looks like because you can explicitly declare it. So if we were to explicitly declare the initializer function of the person class, it would be using the keyword init, followed by two rounded brackets, followed by these curly brackets. And you can put any sort of initialization code in here. Uh, let's say custom init code. Also notice that for this special initializer function, you do not need the FUNC keyword that we normally use to declare functions. This is an initializer function. So let's say, for example, I put in here that I want the name property to be Joe, right? And now if I create a new person object, I say let my person equals new person object, what's actually happening here when I call this? It is creating a new person object, but it's using this init function here, right? And it's actually setting this, it's running this custom code. So to prove it to you, why don't we print out the name right after creating that object? So you can see here, it says Joe as the name. Now the initializer function is useful for you to put any custom code you want in there to set up the object. If you don't specify an init function at all, like what we had before, then it's still there. You can still create new objects from that class. And that's actually what the purpose of the initializer function is for, right? It's to set up a new object of that class, you know, allocate it memory, do whatever it needs to do to return that object to you ready to use. Now here's the interesting thing about initializer functions. So we can have our basic one, but we can also have different ones which accept parameters. For example, let me show you this we can accept a parameter called name. Let's make it a string like that. And then we can also have our basic one that we had before like that. So we can have multiple initializer functions. Let's go back down here. Now I can create a person object with the basic initializer function, which doesn't do anything. And when I run this code, it doesn't print anything out because I haven't written anything in that init function. However, don't forget that I created another one, right, which accepts a name. So this time I can put in a name like that. If I print it, uh, not doing anything right now. Did I, oh, I don't, did I do it? Yeah, my bad, I didn't do anything in here. So <laughs> what I wanted to do inside this initializer function was to set the name property to the name input parameter that got passed in here. Now I could write something like this, uh, where I'm trying to set this property 
right, to the name that gets passed in. But as you can see, it's a little bit ambiguous. Xcode is telling you that there's an error, but it's not recognizing that I'm trying to set this property. It thinks I'm trying to set this parameter to that parameter. So what you can do in this case to resolve this ambiguity is to use the self keyword. So you can write something like that, self.name. And when you do this, this is referring to that object's name. Uh, so this is basically referring to this property here. And now this name is from this parameter. So it's very clear what you're trying to do here. All right, so let's run this code again. And you can see that this time it prints Tom. Now let me ask you another question. Since the employee class subclasses the person class, that means that the employee class also inherits all of its functions from the person class, right? Do you think that this employee class also has these init functions? Why don't we give it a try? We'll go back down here, uh, let my employee equals employee. And as you can see, the employee class does have this init function that it inherited from the person class. So I can use this with the employee class as well. So that's pretty cool. Now I wanna talk about overriding init functions. You know, just like how we talked about right here where the manager class overrides the do work function of the employee class, and then it calls super.doWork, which is going to execute the employee's do work function as well as you know any code down here. The same thing applies for init functions. So let's say that uh, we have in the person class, we have this init function, right? Where you pass in a name. Let's say for the employee class, I wanted to do something extra. I wanted to override init. So we're gonna override the same function from the person class. You know, we're overriding this guy right here. Um, I also wanna initialize the role. So I'm gonna do self role. Let's default everyone to uh, analyst or something like that. All right, everyone starts off at the analyst level. However, what I can do is call this person's, or sorry, I'm gonna call the super classes init function and pass the name into there. So this, this is calling the init function of the person class. This is additional init code. All right, so now by calling this init where I pass in the name of the employee, like if I print my employee dot role, print my employee dot name, So you can see that it's set to analyst and it's set to Joe here. So what I wanted to demonstrate here was that even with init functions, you can use the override keyword and provide uh, a custom implementation of that initializer function and then also call the super classes implementation as well. So I hope that was clear. If it's not, just leave a comment below and I'll be happy to clarify things for you. All right, later on, we'll dive a little deeper into initializer methods, and we'll talk about how there are two different types, one called designated and one called convenience initializers. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already. All right, now click on over to the next lesson and we'll talk there.